All right, we're going to look at IXL Geometry's R.9 module, which will require us to use a combination of sine, cosine, and tangent functions, as well as their inverses to solve for missing angles and right triangles. As we go through these examples, I'm going to show more than one way to answer these questions. I realize that too much variety is not necessarily a good thing, but I do want to demonstrate that there is often more than one way to approach these problems. Let's dive in. This first one asks us to find the measure of angle Z. Notice that I've included some reference figures over here on the right. I also circled angle Z, which is our target. We are given the side adjacent to Z and the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So right away, I'm thinking about the cosine function. I could set it up something like this. Cosine of angle Z is 8 square roots of 66 over 16 square roots of 22. Ooh, let's simplify that right side. We can divide the non-radical factors, 8 and 16, that simplifies to 1 half. Then we can divide the radicands, and that leaves the square root of 3 in the numerator. Okay, simplified, I have cosine of angle Z is the square root of 3 over 2. If I look down here in my reference table, I see that the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So Z itself must be 30 degrees. That also means that our triangle is a 30-60-90 special right triangle, making angle X 60 degrees. Now, I solve this by knowing or referencing a chart for special right triangles angles, but suppose you haven't memorized this chart. I don't blame you. So what happens then? Well, the cosine function takes an angle input and gives a ratio output. However, this time we were solving for an angle and we were given the ratio. In that case, we can use the inverse cosine function to solve for the missing angle. Here's how we'd set it up. Angle Z equals the inverse cosine of the square root of 3 over 2. With our calculator set to degrees, we easily get 30 degrees. Real quickly, I want to point out that some textbooks, websites, and calculators refer to the inverse cosine as arc cosine, or A-R-C-C-O-S for short. You can type that command in Desmos, for example, and it works just the same as using the inverse cosine with the negative 1 exponent. Let's look at another. This time, we're looking for the measure of angle H. Well, we have two congruent sides with the measure of the square root of 10. Can you predict why I put these reference figures on the right? Hopefully you notice that this is an isosceles right triangle, meaning it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. That means there's nothing to solve here. The measure of angles H and G both are 45 degrees. Just the same, let's see how we'd set this up. We are given the sides opposite and adjacent to our unknown angle. That means we'll use the tangent function. The tangent of angle H is the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. Well, that right side simplifies to 1. From our reference table, we see that the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. If you wanted to put this in your calculator, it would be the inverse tangent, or arc tangent, of 1, which is 45 degrees. The next one is not a special right triangle. IXL tells us to round our decimal answer to the nearest tenth. We're looking for the measure of angle A, and we're given the opposite and adjacent sides. Again, we'll use tangent here. We know that tangent of angle A is 3 over 6, or 1 half. That means that angle A equals the inverse tangent of 1 over 2. We'll use our calculator, set to degrees, and we get approximately 26.6 degrees. Next, we're finding the measure of angle J. Once again, we're asked to approximate our answer to the nearest tenth. We are given the sides opposite and adjacent to that angle. We have tangent of angle J equals 7.1 over 3.1. To solve for the angle, we'll use the inverse tangent. That will be angle J equals the inverse tangent of 7.1 over 3.1, which is about 66.4 degrees. As with the inverse cosine, the inverse tangent is sometimes written as arctangent or arctan for short. Trig is full of interesting notation. Last one, we're looking for angle D this time, and we're given the side adjacent to that angle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. We can relate these three pieces using the cosine function. We'll have cosine of angle D equals the square root of 47 over the square root of 57. To solve for D, we'll have D equals the inverse cosine of the square root of 47 over the square root of 57. To approximate this, make sure you type the entire expression with the square roots in your calculator. We'll get about 24.8 degrees. 